weeks. Uh, it was a third-party application. The, the folks who were responsible for, for it there were ripping hair out. The third-party application folks were saying what they always say, which is, hey, it works for everybody else. Uh, but the users were kicking and screaming because the response time was through the roof. Now, the other thing that was going on was we were running at 100% of 16 CPUs. So, uh, our sections, there was actually 18 CPUs on the box, 18 CPUs that were set aside for uh, Sybase. So after talking to them for, oh, 20 minutes, uh, what, what I found was that they had serious... Uh, serious single threading through a particular table that didn't have a clustered index on it, so everything was single threading through the clustered index, and an awful lot of the queries were going, I'm sorry, single threading the tail into the table, and a lot of stuff was going through it. So uh, you know, what, what I said was, look guys, what you really need to do is spread your I.O. out and, uh, and uh, avoid the blocking here, and put a clustered index on the table. Well, for a reason, uh, third parties hate when you question their physical architecture decisions. Uh, you know, a primary reason for that is that they potentially, A, have a problem, and, and B, would necessarily need to notify all the rest of their customers that they have a potential performance issue, which is going to be resolved by themselves. Well, they gave me all the arguments why they didn't want to do it, and I find I'm here to make the suggestion, I think this will solve your problem. Uh, I've got to get back to these other guys. So, I didn't hear anything about that for about two months. Uh, I went back to the group that I was doing the admin work for, and they said, did you ever get feedback uh, on that, that performance and tuning consulting you did? And I said, no, nobody tells me anything. And they said, you knocked, with that one index, you knocked 100% of 16 CPUs down to 8% of 16 CPUs. And I said, I knew it would solve their problem. I wasn't sure it would solve that much. So you know, what, I, what I'm saying here is that as you start going through the sysmon output, and say, ah, CPUs are 100 percent. Automatically throw CPUs, uh, faster processors. Don't start shopping for hardware. And you start looking at the underlying causes of what's causing the CPU to hit 100 uh, percent. I/O bottlenecks. Well, are we going after too much data? Are we single threading through a particular I/O channel? Uh, network. Are we simply sending too much information over the network? I I had a, an experience uh, within the last month where a third-party application was actually a Brio. Brio apparently is owned by Oracle in the Sybase server. And uh, every once in a while, I, I see something where I, I think that it, another DBMS vendor is saying, ah, this is ours. Let's make it perform poorly. So this is what it was doing. It was bringing back 800,000 rows of data from the client side into the eight. Uh, of, showing, of asking you to show your hands, I'd ask you all to raise your hand and say, do you think this is a good idea? Bring 800,000 rows of data back across the network to display 8 just fits into the not clever category. So, uh, that query, very easy. Uh, but again, is this a network problem? It's not really a network problem, it's an application problem. So, we make sure that the problems that we're solving are the actual problems that we have. So, the top by where the bottlenecks might be I/O, might be C, uh, might be a CPU, might be network. Uh, another favorite network problem that I resolved that turned out to be a network card that was bad. You know how when you say, "Gee, your problem is the network," and the network people say, "Oh, well, gee, we're showing almost no utilization here," uh, it becomes a battle sometimes. Well, the, the result, resolution of this particular battle was a bad network card. The network people were right, and the DBMS people were right. They replaced the card, and the problem went away. So they have some information. The order entry application is slow, or you hear, hey, everything is slow, which is the kind of thing that you hear, and, of course, the least useful bit of information. But when they say everything, we start looking at the macro level. When we come down from the macro level, we take the next step down and say, okay, fine. Uh, we're either okay at the big level, we have plenty of capacity for I.O. and CPU or whatever, or we have specific queries which are doing I.O. or a lot of CPU. We'll come take a look at that. But within the scope of 15, we have some specific solutions which enable us to go out and ask the question, what is using the resources? What is using all the CPU? What is doing the blocking? What is the, the, the victims of the blocking? What is using all the I.O.? Uh, one of these is... Uh, called the MBA tables. The MBA tables, I've actually seen a couple of, of uh, uh, a, a, 
of ways of resolving that acronym, but I've always just called them the MDA tables. These are fake tables, kind of in the way that the uh, the memory-only tables work in Sybase. And the idea there is that as the server is doing some work, if the MDA tables are A, installed, and B, enabled, we'll collect information in the MDA tables along the lines of who's running what processes, what SQL running. We may even capture things like query plans and unit. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. So you know what login is causing the problem. Uh, and this can be a problem if you're running a web application, everybody's logged in as web user, which is one of my personal pet peeves. I hate that, but that in my opinion when they start developing apps. If login is causing the problem, you can use query metrics to find out what login is doing it. Or find the problem queries, you can use an updated show plan to identify what the server is using as the query plan and do some very specific debugging. The MDA tables, uh, monitoring and data access, uh, I've, I've seen other uh, other work for the, uh, for the acronym. We're at 12503 to help identify what's in use. In these days, you have to run an install script to get the, uh, the or it was like install mon tables on uh, most flavors of Unix. Uh, and with the uh, advent of team, these are actually installed automatically. Uh, the service have identified that this is critical enough that you be able to do the monitoring that they want to resolute uh, get this, uh, in there without you having to do the extra work. So it's in there for you. The idea here is that we want to be able to identify uh, what resources are being utilized at a particular point in time. There are a lot of MDA tables that are available uh, in Teen. It's the 15 list. Now, I'm not going to use all of these tables on a daily basis to go figure out what's going on in the server. A quick look at these, uh, and by the way, these are in the master database, and they only, uh, memory-only tables, you're not going to uh, to uh, have these persist from one day to the next. And in fact, they will not normally persist from one query to the next. When you say select star from moncash pool and subsequently select star from moncash pool again, you'll get the rows that you haven't already retrieved. So when I'm retrieving these, what I will generally do is push them into a, a temp table like this, select star into time SQL text from mon SQL text. But the particular that help you run the uh, identify uh, SQL running queries in the application, mon SQL text, mon process SQL text, and mon sys SQL text. So identify currently executing SQL and a uh, recent complete SQL. Again, the join to a mon sys statement table to find out what's going on there. And what you really want to do is spend some time familiarizing yourself with the contents of these tables to so know what's there, what you can look for, what you can find. And as we're looking at these things, uh, you can see that there's, oh, uh, 30 or 40 of these things. I'll tell you everything from sitting in wait states, what types of weights they're staying in, what uh, tables are actually doing this, the classes of weight, the weight events that are kicking these things off. Wait time has become a very interesting way of identifying what the load is on your system because wait time is really what is slowing things down. Are we waiting for I.O.? Are we waiting for a lock to be released? Are we waiting for latches? Are we waiting for access into the caches? Are we waiting for you know, fill in the blank? You can identify what you're filling, what you're waiting for. This is your first step to identifying your current worst bottleneck, which tells you the first thing you have to resolve. Now, once you release a bottleneck, sometimes something else pops up as a bottleneck relatively quickly. So as you get involved in the tuning process, tuning is always an iterative process. Identify what the problems are, fix them, come back and start the process all over again. And what you find is you hit a steady state relatively quickly. Uh, you know, if you're able to identify these types of things, it only take two or three days of, OK, we're in, going from being in a mess to having a lot of resolution uh, to the performance issues. Uh, as long as you have a relatively consent way of saying, here's the problem, let's fix this problem and see what bubbles up to the top next. Or optimally, here are the first three, four, five problems, fix those, and then see what bubbles up to the top next. Uh, note that after you've selected Zeta once, okay, we've talked about this. So we do this, select into a temp table so that 
I can run repeated queries off of these things. But this is output from the mon sys statement table for a particular kernel process ID. The headers, there's the values, and what you can see out of here is a lot of really interesting information. At page request, actual physical IOs, packet sent and received, for this particular query, uh, the amount of time you're spending waiting for the statement execution to complete, start and end time of these things. Being able to pick this information up is critical. Particularly if you're picking this up over time, so you can say, ah, oh, gee, the SQL statement took a second two days ago, a second yesterday, and a second today. Trends like that are very important to be able to pick up because you know if you're getting better or worse or if you simply have occasional 